Hey everyone, it's Jack, and today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm out here at the Linux Cast website, and I was watching a video by Matt the Splat. Actually, that's just something I made up. I got to give everyone a nickname. But anyways, Matt had a really interesting video that he had put out here recently. And Matt, I got to admit, is somebody I really enjoy watching. I've been kind of following his channel for quite a while now, and he's always got some really interesting content to talk about, and I really like his style of talking. Then I came across this video in the notifications. It said, sorry, Ben, you have to go. And I was thinking, mm -hmm. I'm a nano user. Maybe Matt finally saw the light. He's going to give them the old heave ho and try a real text editor. So I got on there and I watched the video and I realized, whoa, wait a minute. Uh, Matt was talking about how over the years, he's always really kind of slammed other users uh, for using nano and admitted to being pretty much a Vim elitist. And so he felt like that he wasn't really giving the other text editors a fair shot while slamming them at the same time. So obviously he didn't feel that after he thought about it, you know, that it was really justified unless he tried it himself and actually tried to experience the text editor, then you can justifiably slam it. So while he was saying that, it, he also mentioned this one thing where he was in Nano and he was trying to do something and he said, now I know how Nano users must feel in Vim. And that kind of hit me for a second. I kind of thought about it and I was like, wow, you know, that's a perspective I really never took. And I also realized that I'm kind of the same way. I actually kind of had an elitist attitude with Nano and never really gave Vim a chance because I always felt like Vim was kind of a waste of time because the first time I got into Vim and used it, I was like all the other Gumbies out there. I couldn't get out of it. And that kind of ticked me off right from the start. And I think that that was the biggest thing that put me off is I couldn't get out of Vim. And so right then and there, I decided Vim is the most anti-intuitive console-based text editor that I could imagine. And so I thought, why am I wasting my time with this? And so I thought if I couldn't even do something as simple as get out of it, and I, I didn't know how to put the text into it either. So uh, it was really just something I had no handle on at all whatsoever. And so I never gave it a chance. And as a result, I ended up developing the same kind of elitist attitude with Nano that Matt has with them. So that inspired me to actually think about it a little bit. And I left a comment here with Matt because I thought this was really quite a profound uh, realization, at least on my part. And so I told him that in there, you know, I told him much respects, Matt, your statement about knowing how the nano users must feel in Vim while you were in nano was pretty profound. It made me realize the same thing in reverse. I'm a nano user and I don't care for Vim. I've never given Vim a chance because it wasn't even remotely intuitive to me right off the bat. You're right. One can't criticize the other justifiably without giving it a fair shake first. I'm in the same boat in reverse. Therefore, I'm going to give Vim a shot for a month and see how it goes. Thanks for the new perspective. And so Matt actually replied. And first of all, he said, have a good time. I bet he was laughing when he wrote that. <laughs> Uh, and then he went on to say, Vim Tutor is your friend. Oh, so that sounds like some good advice. So I am going to install Vim here, launch it, and then I'm going to launch Vim, Vim Tutor and see if, and just do a real quick look at Vim Tutor there and see if I'm going to really regret the next 30 days or not. But either way, I'm committed. I'm going to take the 30 day challenge with Vim and see if I can survive. I think it's only fair since. Matt is going to have to hold his nose and use Nano for 30 days. <laughs> so this is going to be fun. Let me jump into the console real quick and we'll launch them. Okay, here I am. I'm on my desktop. And for some reason, I kind of feel like one of those people that is at the amusement park. And I just got on a really giant roller coaster. And I'm starting to go up the first giant hill. And I'm thinking, why did I do this? <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> I'm going to do a Pac-Man install Vim here. And oh. Looks like I already, yeah, that's right. I already installed this. So I did that earlier off camera. I'm just going to say no there. So we're good. I'm just going to jump in here and uh, kind of see what happens. And oops, uh, Vim. Oh, and Vim. Man not found. Ah, okay. So it looks like I got installed Neo Vim, I guess. So let me just do that real quick. I just up arrowed my key. Oops. Let's do that again. Not N. So up arrow, backspace, EO, Neo Vim. 
Okay, let's do yes. And there we go. Excellent. So now let's jump into them and see what happens. So here we are. Nice. Okay, so the first thing I see is some uh, a little bit of help here. So that's kind of nice. I don't remember that years ago when I tried this. So just type help to get into the help file there. Q is to get out or colon Q maybe. Uh, so that's good to know. I wonder why I didn't figure that out before. Probably because of the colon probably messed me up. I don't know. But let me try help with the colon. And so here we got a help file. This is kind of cool. So moving around, looks like you can do it with the, the cursor keys, the up and down arrows, or to use the letters J, K, L, H, J, K, L. Nice. Okay, then uh, to close the window, colon Q, and then get out of them, colon Q, A, explanation point. All right, and that'll get you out without saving any changes, it looks like. And then it also looks like uh, the highlighted words there are tags kind of like hyperlinks you can click on them and apparently it'll open up like a man file for that uh, subject that's kind of cool so that worked colon q nice got out of there so now let's go back in but this time i'm gonna edit my config dot config slash hyper slash hyperlink comp man i'm asking for trouble <laughs> let's see what it looks like anyway wow this is kind of cool we got the dual color thing going on here we got our comments are in green that's kind of nice right off the bat um that's something i don't see in nano nano is just kind of monocolor so i am liking that that makes it easier to kind of kind of see your comments and so forth and i'm assuming that if you were editing like a python file or something you probably have even more syntax highlighting going on i'm assuming so let me just scroll over here and see if i can delete that yes and let's hit delete a few times. Yeah, it did. Took it out. Wow. So, so far, that's kind of as easy as nano. Um, but I can't put it back in. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. How do I put that in? Let's do colon help and see what it says. So, colon Q, get out. QA, get out without saving. Hmm. And a lot of stuff here in the help page. But I'm actually thinking that maybe I probably want to use Vim Tutor because that's probably going to really get me where I want to go. And so, yeah, Vim Tutor, I probably should just launch that instead of messing with the help file. So I think I'll just do that QA thing again and get out. And it didn't work. <laughs> Press enter or type command to continue. Okay. Yeah, I can't really make out what that's saying there, but uh, okay. I guess I'll just press enter to continue. And oh, I hit the insert or something. Uh, well, crap. I'm a putz. How do I get out of here? I just learned how to get out and I still can't get out. There. Commit. Super Q. <laughs> what a putz. Let's go into Vim Tutor here. And oh, I don't have man installed. This is a fresh install of Arch Linux. So there's a lot of things that aren't on here yet. I'm just going to install the man DB there real quick. We'll go, yes, excellent. So now let's jump in there. Actually, I don't need man there, just Vim Tutor. Vim Tutor. Yes. So here we go. Nice. Okay. So this is our Vim Tutor, and this is looking kind of cool already. So I'm just going to scroll down with my arrow key. Lesson 1.2 Exiting Vim. I like that. They teach you right off the bat how to get the heck out of it. <laughs> so press the escape key to make sure you're in normal mode. Oh, okay. So they must have like an edit mode and a normal mode. That makes sense. Colon Q explanation point to get out. Ah, uh, explanation point. That's what I forgot. Okay. Get back in here by executing that command. And that got you into this tutor. And then just type Vim Tutor again to get back in. Cool. So that's the first lesson is a type colon Q explanation point. Press enter and then that'll get me out and discard any changes that I made. So let's do that. Colon Q explanation point. I'm out. Wahoo. So I made the first big milestone. Nice. So that's great. So back in here now, I learned the first basic and probably one of the major things that you got to know in Vim, how to get out. It's kind of like getting into a room and then uh, not knowing how to work the door, I guess. <laughs> so that is awesome. So let's see what else we can do here now that I know how to get out. And somehow I typed that. I don't know what I did there. Am I? Ah, okay, back up, continue down. And so, yeah, the, the cursor keys, they all seem to work great. So I'm just kind of using my arrow. Oops. And... It looks like you can only arrow over as far as the number of characters. So if there was like five characters, hold the J down and that kind of worked. It was telling me to just kind of hold the J until it repeats. And it did. So I can do that repeating by holding the key down. And then I doesn't get me out of insert. So I'll get you into insert, but it doesn't get you out. So it's not a toggle thing. Uh, 
and that was Control I. I made kind of a cool upper ASCII character. <laughs> hmm. So let me arrow down a little bit. <clears throat> and if you're unsure about something you type, press Escape to place you in a normal mode. Oh yeah, normal mode. That's probably what gets me out of insert too, of course. There we go. So Escape. All right. I to get in and Escape to get out. Cool. Okay. Well, I can handle that. So I feel a little bit less putsy now. So if you're ever unsure, press Escape. Those are the magic words. Okay, so there's our 1.2 exiting Vim. So that was worthwhile for sure. And using the cursor keys. So I kind of got that down. And I'm still in insert, it looks like. So those two J's work. Let me back out of that. Escape. Yes. So I got the hang of that part. Ah, let's see what else there is. Let's just do a couple other quick sections just to kind of get through the basic. Okay, so it looks like the next section is editing and deletion. So that's kind of cool. So move the cursor to the line below marked with uh, three dashes and an arrow. To fix the errors, we're going to use our X key. So I'm going to scroll over here and take out the C. So I press X and that worked. So let me jump over to the double Ds. Took out a D, took out a B, took out an R, take out an H, and take out the O. Oops, too many O's. Uh, now I got to insert. So I to insert. Let me arrow up again. Ah, now I see why the letter keys are kept faster. Nice. Okay. So that was the wrong letter. Oh, okay. So the cow jumped over the moon. Now we don't have extra letters. So now I know that using the X will get those out of there and I didn't even have to be in insert mode. So I like that. That's cool. Very cool. Now that the line is correct, go to lesson 1.4. As you go through this tutor, do not try to memorize. Learn by usage. That's great advice. Yeah, definitely. Kind of like trading. You got to learn by doing, not by watching. Okay, and I accidentally had the pause key pressed here, but what I did was here I'm at the appending part of the text editing. And so it's saying to press A to append the text. And originally I just pressed A and uh, it didn't really append. So you got to do shift A apparently. So I did a capital A and then it takes me right to the end of the line. So here it's showing there is some missing text from this and I got to type in line. So I hit the capital A and then it took me right there to the end of this line. It just kind of moved me over automatically. So that was really cool. I'm just going to finish that and let's go to the next one. It says there is also some text and then it's incomplete. So let me finish that. So shift A and boom, right to the end of the line. Nice. Missing here. And it puts me into insert mode automatically. So there we go. Now I know how to append. I like the append thing. That's very handy to just instantly be at the end of the line. Very cool. So our next lesson is 1.6 editing a file. Use WQ colon WQ to save a file and exit. Ooh. So before executing any of the steps, read the entire lesson. If you have access to another terminal, do the following there. Otherwise, exit this tutor. So, okay, I'll open another terminal. I'll just hit the old uh, super C there and do Vim file.txt is what they want me to do. So this created a file called file.txt and opened it up in Vim. Very cool. So now it says insert and delete text as you learned in the previous lesson. Save the file with changes and exit with Vim. Exit Vim with colon WQ. All right. Okay. So hi there. I am inserting TE and I'm not going to finish it. Next line. So why did I do that? Question mark. I'm glad you asked. It's because I want to practice appending. So I'm going to go back up to the top line here, press shift A, and it took me to the end of the line. So I'm going to complete it. Complete, complete it. There we go. Text explanation point. Nice. And here I'll just kind of practice my deletion. So I'm just going to back up and hit my X key after I get over the question mark. Hit X. And that took out the question mark. So that was delete practice. Nice. And then I'll just do like insert explanation point question mark. Cool. So now I'm going to save it. Excellent. I feel like a genius already. <laughs> cool. So colon Q W colon W Q and I'm not out. Why aren't I out? Oh, because I'm still in insert mode. All I did was write it into the text file. Why a putz? Here, I thought I was an expert already. <laughs> oh, well, you got to get slapped down when you start getting too uh, overconfident, I guess. So I'll just get out for real. So escape to get out of insert mode, back to normal mode, and then colon WQ. I'm out. And so it should have saved the file. So I'm going to cat file.txt. And there it is. Hi there. I am inserting text. So why did I do that question part? And then it even has the colon WQ that I wrote in instead of, uh, you know, getting out the right way. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, I'm learning a lot already. This is really cool. So there you go. I think 
that'll kind of get me through the 101 level of the tutorial. So I feel like I'm really off to a great start here. I think I got the better end of the stick than Matt did. Matt's got like, he's got to hold his nose for 30 days in nano. Well, I get to learn something really exciting and is probably a step up from nano. I'm sure it is. But so I feel like I got the better end of the stick. Sorry, Matt. Good luck with that. But uh, I'm really looking forward to this. I think I'm really going to enjoy this. It's one of those things where I feel like, wow, I should have done this like years ago. Why didn't I? Because I was too narrow minded and didn't want to give it a chance. And then I kind of developed, as a result, almost instantly an elitist attitude against Vim, thinking, yeah, some people just like doing things the hard way. Well, heck with that. And that was kind of my attitude, and it kind of stuck. So, Matt, thanks for opening my eyes and my mind and inspiring me to do this challenge. This is going to be great. So yes, I'm going to commit myself to the next 30 days. And on top of that, I'm going to do like what Matt did. Matt deleted Vim from his drive, I think or at least edited his bash shell. So if he typed in Vim, it would bring up nano. So I think I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to edit my bash shell and just, uh, you know, alias nano for Vim. And then that way, if I type nano by mistake, I can't cheat. So good thinking, Matt. And that way Vim's going to come up no matter what. So there you go. I hope you found this moderately entertaining, or at least got a good laugh out of watching me be a dummy for a while. And if you did, don't forget to leave that thumbs up and hit subscribe. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.